Okay, guys. So the next thumbnails will be aesthetics. Anyway, red eyes. The whites of the eyes seemed almost painted red. <clears throat> the eyes turned towards their companion. Matsuda Yasuki muttered a question. How long have you been conscious? After blinking for a strangely long time, the person on the bed, super high school level student council president, Murasami Sushan, opened his mouth slowly. His lips were parched and made a dry sound as he opened his mouth. Always, his voice was quiet and hoarse. He sounded like a completely different person in comparison to before. So that's how it's been. Matsuda lay grin creep into his expression. He turned to his friend, showing a friendly smile. But don't you think it's stupid to trick me like that? However, Murasami did not make a sound. His eyes showed no emotion as he stared at Matsuda. Matsuda continued in his joking tone to open the tense atmosphere. It must have taken a lot of acting on your part. Your actual physiological or psychological or whatever symptoms and echoes of such have almost completely disappeared. Yet you were easily able to cease being a normal person. We wouldn't have been in this situation had I not seen through your act. Why did you come? But its reply almost came with a violent attitude. As if giving up, Matsuda's expression returned to a more sober look. You said that earlier. You asked us of those ancient artifacts from the steering committee that I want you to find out whether you really woke up or not. In response, Murasami only looked away, redirecting his attention to the ceiling and blinking without meaning. To be honest, even I'm having my doubts. Matsuda licked his dry lips before continuing. What if I told those people that you're awake? Must some remain silent to Matsuda's questioning like a remote control call with a flat battery. His reactions were slow and sluggish at best. Maybe is it just acting? Matsuda breathed out a deep sigh. He just answered his own question. Still, I'm sure the news will surprise them. After that, I already guess what would happen. Didn't they used to say when people need to prepare for the worst, desperate times call for desperate measures? At the moment, they're relying entirely on influential people outside the school to cover up this incident. Matsuda looked away from Murasami and slowly gazed at his surroundings. Instead of looking for some kind of reaction from Murasami, he turned to the surrounding electronic equipment as if trying to communicate with it. After all, they can't afford to make up excuses for this, like allowing a known threat into the general public. They can't just pretend there's no danger. There are also people who say who say a ruthless person cannot be a good researcher. But not that it matters. It depends on how much talent there is. Matsuda stayed talkative and Murasami didn't even shift an eyebrow. Murasami Sushun used to be the kind of person who would at least pretend to laugh no matter how bad the joke was. It seemed like that man was no longer there. The issue isn't that he's feeling depressed. As Matsuda said, he brushed his hair out of his face. 
His own narrow eyes look sharply at Murasami. Oi, Murasami, this is a bargaining point. But I do want to tell you, I'm saying this to make sure you understand the school's intentions and the steering committee's intentions are very different. To be truthful, I don't care what those guys think. I just want to know what the heck is happening at this school. So then I, I'm just pretending. Most of me suddenly open his mouth. Matsuda saw him smile, or maybe he imagined it. In the next moment, any trace of it had completely disappeared. The reaction he just gave him proved that good person was still there. There might be some to this. Matsuda took off his jacket and untucked his worn out white shirt. Returning to his more familiar appearance, it wasn't because he had become more relaxed. If anything, it was just the opposite. It felt more like he was just getting down to business. I get it. I don't think you'll be able to escape by just using this act. Even though you're in this state, you're still worried about this school and you're willing to fight for it. That's why you're using this act. So you can escape from the eyes of the steering committee. Matsuda sat down on the bed and leaned in to say something. If I were you, I'd be trying to get used to this kind of power. I'll protect you if I have to. Once I get my false report to those guys, you might even be able to fight along with them. Since it's not always... The... That bad... To fight alongside the bad guys. Matsuda once again asked how Murasami's condition was, only to see Murasami would not be part of the act. No matter what the force behind it is, I still don't know very much about the incident. That's why I need you to survive and explain it to me. But Murasami lowered his eyelids slightly. At the very least, from what Matsuda could gather, his slight movement meant refusal. Matsuda thought this would be the case, but he had a more pressing question, and though he didn't particularly want to hear the answer which may be given, because it was something he had been told before. The culprit is Kamakura Izuru. Correct? That was his question. I heard about it from the staff members. The name of the person who survived the incident. And then went missing afterwards. It's called Kamako Izuru. But does that person really exist? After a short silence, Mosami. Finally opened his mouth. Kamakura Izuru killed the student council. His voice was hoarse and unused, but he conveyed his message. Um. So then, Kamakura Izuru is real? Matsuda listened for confirmation, however, Murasami didn't reply. His mouth remained open, stiff and unmoving. Oi, Murasami, Matsuda called out, urging him on. The boy's mouth finally moved again, however, he finished saying only that Matsuda sent something from his voice, so then that doesn't matter. There was no sense of crisis in the hope speaker Kami Murasami held on to. So then, it isn't a known fact whether Kamakura Izuru is the culprit behind the incident or not. Matsuda's thoughts went along the lines of, that must be it. There was one more thing Matsuda 
needed to hear above all else. He had realized he breathed in heavily and before giving himself a chance to hesitate, he asked his question, what about Enoshima Junko? What connection does she have to the incident? Murasami closed his eyes. It was a blink that seemed to last forever. The moment, the next moment, he opened his eyes again. His face was unfamiliar. Tears were threatening to spill from his open eyes. He made a grinning sound with his teeth bared. His crazy expression turned into one of pure exhaustion. Then Matsuda realized. The person named Morisami Sushan was no longer there. The man they called super high school level student council president was completely gone. The boy who was familiar to him had met his aunt. I, I, I. That thing opened its mouth painfully wide. He began to spout words that did not even sound like words. I... I must kill... M must kill... Sorry, I must kill. I must kill? Who? Who are you talking about? Matsuda placed his hand on that thing's bedside and looked down to him as he asked. Huge white saw eyes turned towards Matsuda briefly. Enoshima Junko. Enoshima Junko. The inside of his body was beaten by something as he was overtaken by shock. It was beating... It was the beating of his own heart. The harsh impact it had caused Matsuda to lose his own voice. Suddenly, that thing screamed out, Ah! Blood rushed to his face, flushing it to a dark red, making him look like a demon. Enoshima Junko. A lot of Enoshima Junkos. That thing continued to scream horribly, sounding like a broken record. Kill, 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 kill. Kill, 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 kill. He kept screaming and yelling over and over again. He continued to scream. As that thing screamed with his entire body, Matsuda began to feel a little cold. It wasn't that he was composed, that feeling was lost. It was as if his body temperature itself had dropped. He already understood everything. He already understood everything about the world's largest incident in Hope Peak Academy's history. Most Sami Soshun's true enemy and Hope Peak Academy's true enemy was most likely Enoshima Junko. That was his conclusion. He had always guessed it as the worst case scenario. Matsuda had no choice but to establish it established his despair and disdain was all. So then, I'm out of options. I passed the point of no return a long time ago. Something around his slow abdomen began to bubble and boil. Still hot. His whole body became energetic. Matsuda Turn to Morosami. Hey, I said earlier that I'd protect you if I had to, didn't I? He spoke in a calm tone of voice. But there's also something else I have to protect at all costs. They're hopeless if I don't protect them. 
So I've decided I'll sacrifice anything to protect them. As the words left his mouth, they were swallowed by screams. Even so, Matsuda continued to talk. I'm awful. I don't particularly want to think about that. If I forgot the person I kept for, and if they die, the, that door is unbearable. So I'll protect them. No matter what happens, I'll protect them. As Matsuda spoke softly, he placed both of his hands around that thing's neck. A lot of kills. Even so, that thing continued to shout. He didn't seem to understand what was happening. If there's a grudge against me for this, then there's a grudge against me. Matsuda closed his eyes and thought to himself, I don't mean that person. I mean, I'll hold a grudge against myself. In the next moment, Matsuda gathered all his power into his hands and squeezed. Finally, the incredibly loud voice, the screams of that thing had come to a stop. The bed to which he was assigned started to shake with a loud rattling sound. Matsuda was leaning forward, his head falling in front of his eyes. However, he didn't loosen his grip. Instead, he tightened it. He put all his power into his hands. Quickly, the bed shaking subsided. The feeling of what his hands were wrapped around disappeared. The feeling of that thing ending. After a while, Matsuda finally opened his eyes again. All the muscles in his body felt exhausted and intense, as if he had become a solid piece of iron. Sweat dripped from his forehead, landing on his long eyelashes. He frankly turned his line upside towards that thing on top of the bed. The light from those eyes had disappeared. All that was left was a deep darkness. Those eyes had a darkness deeper than the color of darkness itself. Okay, guys, I have 12 more chapters left. But... Chapter 5 is long. So... I'm done for this video.